Hello, hello, hello there everyone. Alex here with Luxat Games, here for round three of the Pioneer PTQ. See what we can do. See if we can be on the play. Ha, we won another die roll. Against Django, Reality Sculptor. That's kind of a neat name. We won the die roll, we would like to be on the play. Sand has a boggle on one and aura on two. We're gonna keep it. We're gonna go Glade Cover Scout into Armor or Griff Spoon, depending, into Season of Growth, into Griff Spoon Draw a Card. Not the best. Obviously, we wish just Mana Confluence if it had been a uh, Temple Garden. Forest uh, would have been much better. Or Fortified Village had obviously been another land. But I think we're pretty happy with uh, our curve nonetheless. Obviously, if we're able to just rip a land for two, we'll go, go ahead and probably play Season of Growth and just start going off with it. Currently we're waiting on the opponent. Uh, you can never know how long it takes sometimes for the opponent to get back to the round, as they are done um, on Magic the Gathering online. Uh, opponent could be taking care of their kids, or feeding their dog, or you know any, any number of things that they could currently be up to. So we will sit here and wait a moment. Actually, instead of sitting here and wait a moment, it's getting a little dark in here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the lighting. And just like that, here I am. All right, so hopefully that's a little bit better in the lighting department. Now we still, huh, still looking to improve in the opponent department. <laughs> Jingle Reality Sculptor, where are you, opponent? For those of you watching on YouTube, uh, while we have a moment to kill, this is just a reminder that I have legacy content, modern content, and pioneer content all on my channel at bit.ly forward slash capital L Luxac. Additionally, if there's a deck that you want to see played, send me a message. I'm up to play most decks in most formats, although I generally try to avoid standard. Um, yeah. It's my little pitch there to kill a few minutes. We're currently up three minutes on the clock. If the opponent is on a field of the dead deck, there is a good chance that we um, can win this match based on clock alone. <laughs> Although that is not how I would prefer to win our match. I do definitely prefer to win by reducing our opponent's life total to zero with this deck. Um, we are playing a PTQ. <laughs> so I, I will not, you know, if I was sitting down in paper, I would not mind if my opponent forgot to show up that round. So, funny story to kill a few minutes while we wait. I was actually playing at Tier 1 Games down in Temecula. And the person that made 8th place, based on tiebreakers, had already left because an X and 2 can't make it, right? And so the other guy that was X and 2, uh, that was 100% sure that he drew himself in was very happy to hear that at ninth place he managed to make it into uh, eighth. Now, fun point of discussion is depending on when that player is considered actually dropped from the event actually affects several factors. So first off, if that player makes top eight and is still considered in the tournament, they will be paired for their first round of top eight and the person in first gets to win for free. 
Instead, they actually had to play a match. However, if they are dropped from the tournament before the top eight is actually announced, then they actually aren't even in the top eight. The other player in ninth makes eighth, and then they play it out. Just interesting things about paper magic that realistically you never have to encounter online. You, you, <laughs> if they're dropped, they'll automatically move it depending on when they dropped it. So hopefully everyone out there had an awesome Thanksgiving. I did have both of my boys on Thanksgiving and it was wonderful. Oh look, we have an opponent. All right, late cover scout go opponent. On the mold of six. Either that was the hardest tank of the opponent's life or they just got back. Here's my torment slippery boy. Please have a handful of fatal pushes opponent. Please have a handful of fatal pushes opponent. That would be great. So I guess bad news for us would be if the opponent was on some sort of fast red aggro deck. Since our first land of the game was a mana confluence. <laughs> but anyways, hopefully everyone out there is having an awesome holiday. Um, I got to see the cousins, parents, all that wonderful stuff. My sister, her kids. We played some Yoshi's Island on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> it was hilarious. Their kids were, her kids were shocked that I knew how to play Yoshi's Island. It's like, um, kids, I've beaten this game 100% every level, including the bonus levels. And they're like, there's bonus levels? <laughs> we didn't know that. It's like, it's okay, kids, let me help you. And I helped them get 100% on a few levels. All right, points back again. Fetid pools tapped. Well, if that doesn't scream to me that they're probably a Field of the Dead deck, I don't know what does. All right, so this is gonna enter tapped. We're gonna take one here, get this ethereal armor down, and let's get in for two. Next turn, hopefully we draw an untapped land. If it's a forest or temple garden, we get to bring in uh, fortified village first and go uh, season of growths into Griff spoon or cartouche, depending. It's also possible, I actually have several friends that are just getting into Magic Online because of all the the insane number of PTQs that are currently being run on it. So it's very possible that our opponent doesn't normally play or is streaming. Because trust me, as someone that streams occasionally, <laughs> trying to get more into it, um, it can sometimes be rather time consuming as you talk over your various play lines with your chat. Curious if that was actually the five minute delay is that the opponent was um, discussing their potential play lines with their chat. Maybe, who knows? There's no actual way to be able to tell something like that. At the moment though, we're just trying to <laughs> find out if our opponent's coming back. So, interestingly enough though, this name seems familiar. So I'm just curious. Just curious if this happens to be an opponent um, that actually is famous or something. <laughs> I've had that happen before. <laughs> Lost to Saffron Olive uh, and a fun game I was playing. Might make it into one of his videos. He was playing Mono Colorless. It was great. All right, opponent is down seven minutes on clock. We are abusing that button. All right. What do you got, opponent? Sure. Uh, probably take Season of Growth here. If they take Griff Spoon, I'll be terrified of a cry of the Carnarium. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, let's start with the cartouche. Resolves, our guy becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Let's go ahead and play this. It becomes a 6-5, play a tap land, and let's go to combat. 
cool thing is if they thought sees this and we draw a land, we can just immediately replay it. So hit him down to 10. Go ahead, opponent. Next turn, we get to hit them to 1, depending. What is this, opponent? Murderous Rider, sure. Hmm. Could have potentially put it on this to try and get in with both of them, but I just don't see the point of that. All right, looks like our opponent didn't have a bunch of fatal pushes, but it looks like they did have a murderous rider. Put him to two. That also limits what untapped lands they could have for a potential wrath. Ritual of suit is the one I'm afraid of. Do you have an opponent? Do you have untapped land plus ritual of suit? <laughs> they didn't. All right, that's game one. It's game one against what appears to be blue black control. Hmm. 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 All right. All righty then. I want these ley lines. Think I want these valorous stances? I believe I want these valorous stances. I'm not sure exactly how many, but I'm going to take at least those. Going to go ahead and cut an unflinching courage or two, two unflinching courages. We're not really trying to punch through. They are a black deck, so I'm going to go ahead and leave in the cartouches just in case. Cut two of all the glitters. And let's see. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm only going to bring in two Valor stances for now until they actually show me a sweeper. I want them to show me Ritual Assip before I bring in more of these. Because if I'm just playing around Languish, uh, Valor stance doesn't do very much. Yeah, this one's fine. I'm going to keep this one. Here's our Ley Line. Alright. Current plays tap land passes. Force there is not an ideal draw. We're hoping to run off a couple auras here. One cool thing I guess we have is if they do start blowing up our stuff, we do have a. Um, yeah, we're kind of flooding out here. Uh, and another boggle though. This will be a 3 3 if this resolves. Hoping to dodge cry for one. I think cry is my no. Cry is minus two minus two. I think we're in the clear to dodge cry this turn. Would really love an aura off the top though, or season of growth even. Or just ride on defense. Sounds good. <sighs> All right. Go ahead and play tap land here, and let's go to combat. That was a rough draw. I might go ahead and play out another Glade cover here because it's um, we also have to play around a Rankle. And this Murder Strider could mean that they're just going uh, go Rankle, go, and I d really don't want to play into that. There's still a lot of auras we can hit that makes our guy pretty powerful. Is it Rankle opponent? Or is it ritual set? No blocks on your two power deed. Looks like ritual set. Because Rankle would have him break combat, guarantee you. Brazen borrower our ley line thought sees us. Sure, opponent. We had another glade cover scout. Our hand is terrible. I am actually okay with converting this Glade Cover Scout into a shock. Like, hmm. Hmm. Let's get the Season of Growth down. Probably should have played around Spell Pierce. 
We don't really know what the opponent's on yet, so it seems reasonable. Alright, let's hope we don't get wrathed here. And then auras off the top start looking real good. That's a ritual set. Nope. <laughs> Another murderous rider. That's that's great for us. Attacking. That's wild. Ah, they have another brazen bar. All right, that seems reasonable. Aura. Damn it. All right. Uh, white, white, green, green, ley line. All right, so there's a good chance we're losing this Glade Cover Scout here, but I think that's fine. Oh, duh, I shouldn't have attacked with the 1-1. One, one. Yep, oops, punt there. Now, now we're really dead to a rankle, so that's terrible. That's terrible. That that was a misplay, as, as can be. Yep. Pontinius back for four. Unfortunately, ours don't have life link yet. <sighs> that was a great draw. All right, let's start comboing off. Yes, always draw a card. Would you like to counter this one opponent? We also have to make note that if we give our guy flying, this brazen borrower can block it. All right, let's get in there for nine. Get our opponent down to five. And pass the turn. There's a lot of things we can draw out of our deck that uh, just basically kill our opponent. They're going to flash and borrow here probably. Yep. Yep. Opponent has seven power in play. We're at 12. If they attack with everything, they die. They must have a Wrath here. Or another blocker. What do you have, opponent? What have you? If it's a uh, tax-based counterspell, I think we have those mostly covered at the moment. All right, well, if they have Brazen Borrower, we are dead. But there's no reason for us not to turn our guy sideways, so... Nine? What have you, opponent? All right, our opponent does have it. Unfortunately, since they are so far behind on clock, I am... All right, wait. Fuck. Excuse my language. Uh, Should have cast Ethereal Armor post-combat, drawn some cards this season. Yep. Yep. Let's go ahead and uh, we're going to draw a card and see what this season of growth would have led to. Blocker, that's not quite enough. So it's two, three. And we wouldn't have drawn another card because that's it. All right. And that would have been a scry. All right, cool. At least it didn't cost us the game, but I definitely punted there. All right, game three. Um, looks like Brazen Borrower is their main interaction with us. So we're going to go ahead and cut these Valor stances and bring back in more auras. Send it back like that. Let's go. All right, this hand is a bunch of lands, a Tower Archer, and a Griff Spin. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this. This hand's fine. We're going to keep this one. Send back one of the Griff Spoons. Seems fine. A little unfortunate we're susceptible to Thought Seize on one, but not much we can do about that particular situation. I still think this was the correct move. So we're going to lead Tapland Fortified Village into Mana Confluence Tower Archer and try and go off from there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and keep these. All right, 
component is still going apparently. So one interesting thing about the new mulligan as well is that it still shows them at seven, even though apparently they took a mulligan if it's, or they have a pregame action. But I think they're still mulliganing. But it still showed them at seven, so I didn't gain the information if they had mulliganed or not. Interesting to note. All right, put mulligan to three. Oh my God. Well, if they have Thoughtseize, we're going to play a long game, hoping to draw another Boggle. If they don't have Thoughtseize, whoo-wee! We might be able to run away with it. All right, opponent, what was your three? This is the Thoughtseize. It's not a Thoughtseize. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, it's not a Thoughtseize. I hope we don't lose this after our opponent mulligans to three, but let's play our boggle. There's no force spike in this format, or at least any one mana force spike. All right, let's see what we draw. A season of growth would be insane. Gonna go ahead and shock this in. Ethereal Armor. Sentinel's Mark. All right, let's get in there. They cycle the land, that's pretty good for us. Hit them for five. See if they hit their third land drop. They cycled another land. I imagine they have to be hitting their land drops if they're cycling lands. If they thought sees us, they'll lose two life and then we can bring back Griff Spoon to hit them. Sweet. All right. Protect against Edicts. Let's go ahead and Griff Spoon this guy. All right, we have them dead in two as long as they don't um, kill us with Ritual Assert, which we haven't seen in the previous two games. So I like our odds. It's fourth land. Oh no, is it really Ritual Assert? Is an inverter of truth. Interesting. Well, opponent will have three cards left in their library. Has to block this. All right, let's go ahead and get this on here. That's a crazy one. I've never seen Inverter of Truth. Okay, attack with both our dorks. They have to block our 8-7 and take 2 down to 4. Maybe they have a Jace. Oh my god, how insane would that be? If they're a combo deck with Jace, that, that would be kind of hot. If I die right now to a Jace, I'm not even mad. That tap land means I'm not dying to Jace this turn. All right, opponent. I'm putting you to the test. What do you have that can stop me? Is that just a dead? Is that just a dead? <gasps> Two and one in the PTQ with Boggles, boggly boys, hexproof dudes. Yeah, that's some hype. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Alex here with Luxac Games. Thank you, my Luxac Legion out there. 
hit that like button, leave a comment, and smash that like button. Just a reminder, subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. You're what makes it real. Alex here with Luxat Games reminding you to have an awesome day, and I'll see you in round four.